Chris, I'll give you five dollars if you can name three active MLB baseball players right now. I no, can't. Can you name two? No. Can you name one? No. You can't name one active MLB baseball player right now. Not one. No. Dang. I don't follow sports like you do. Oh, Chris, 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 Chris. No, no, I, 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 no. Well, that means you owe me five bucks. Welcome back to Crosscut. Chris owes me five dollars. Everybody remember that by the end of the episode. No, pay no, it. didn't shake on it, so no. Gentleman's agreement. No, it's, it's, that's still a handshake. <laughs> no. Well, this will have to do for now. Don't Stop. cry, Chris. There's no crying in baseball. Wrong oh, movie. that's a different movie. Wrong movie. <laughs> different baseball game. Speaking of baseball, today we are going to go with The Sandlot. 1993 movie. I mean, it's as old as me. I haven't seen this movie since, since I was a kid. I mean, the only reason I thought about this was because at work, someone was playing it in the background. I was like, oh, I haven't seen that in a while. It's, it's a good nostalgic feeling to it, you know? I don't really have much of a background with this movie other than just watching it when it was on cable or something like that. And remembering, like, I'm practically their age when I'm watching it. And like, hmm, who, who do I resonate more with? Not Smalls. Really? You're not Smalls in this situation? <laughs> Can't name one MLB baseball player. So clearly you would be that version of who's Babe Ruth. You don't have any baseball stuff. You don't have the hat. You don't have a shirt. Nothing. Yeah, you're not Smalls. Okay, Chris. Who are you? Are you Rodriguez? Is that what you're saying? I'm definitely not Benny the, the Jet Rodriguez. No. Um, no. I was never the best baseball player on my team. I, I was, I'm probably more of... Squints. I don't have to... Maybe a squints, actually, yeah, or yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, definitely, oh, yeah. I was a, I was a smaller kid playing baseball. Um, you know, okay. I never really ran my mouth like yeah, yeah, uh, or squints did. But yeah, I would have to go with, or maybe even like a Timmy or Tommy Timmons, maybe one of them because of the brother yeah. connection. Me and my brother grew up playing baseball together, so I, could, yeah. I would even maybe go with that. But definitely not Benny the Jet. Uh, my brother would be Benny the Jet because he's a great baseball player. But we'll get to that. Okay. My whole okay. family when we get to that. You are 100% Scott Smalls. <laughs> yes. Have you even played baseball once in your life? Wow. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got to think about this. Hold on, hold on. Have you ever thrown a baseball once in your life? I've thrown baseballs, yes. Oh, baseballs, plural. Oh, wow. <laughs> you sure it was a baseball? It was a baseball was, because, ball. you know, my friend Ruben, okay. he, he played a lot of baseball growing up. And okay. all kinds of sports, but baseball is like his biggest thing, that and football. Okay. Okay. So it was because of him because he had the bats, he had the gloves, he had the all he had all the equipment. Okay. So every time I would go to his house, you know, we, we'd play that or go to a field. And you'd go, uh, I hate this. I want to play video games. <laughs> I wasn't even a video game person. I was literally the couch potato. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, I never really played an entire game of baseball. Softball, mm-hmm. yes. Baseball, no. Okay. So, kind of okay. counts, right? I guess. All right. Okay. Well, <clears throat> me, <laughs> uh, I am the complete opposite of you, Chris. Yeah. I come from a baseball family. My dad played minor league. My brother plays minor league still. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad has coached for my entire life. He coached me growing up. I played baseball. I played organized baseball from the age of five to 18. So I played for a good 13 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and when it comes to the Sandlot, I completely relate to this movie for multiple reasons. First off, this was me as a kid. I grew up in the 90s and early 2000s as a, as a kids these age. Mm-hmm. And I played in Sandlots. We, we were playing baseball either on the streets or in my childhood neighborhood. Our school actually had a rectangle shaped field that was basically our version of a sandlot. We would play football, okay. baseball, any other sport you could think of. Um, although I don't think we were using actual baseballs just because there was windows. So we were probably just <laughs> using tennis balls at the time. Okay. But of course, if we wanted to play real baseball, there was plenty of baseball fields around. We would just go there if we wanted to play mm-hmm. actual baseball with with you know the actual baseballs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I grew up playing in sandlots, playing on the streets, baseball, and you know other sports as well. But 
baseball is a huge part of my life. It still is. My dad still teaches baseball. He's been doing it for my whole life. He's pretty much been my mentor. Um, I remember watching this movie, funny enough, we used to take road trips from Buffalo to Orlando, um, and we used to go down to Florida every spring break for a week. My dad actually coached high school baseball. We used to go down for spring training. And I remember finally one year, my dad used to hook up uh, a little TV with a built-in VCR in the center <laughs> console of the van. And me and my brother and my mother, my sister, my brothers would right. play video games and we'd watch movies. And one movie I finally remember <laughs> watching as a kid on the way down to Florida was The Sandlot nice. on VHS. So oh, yeah, I, yeah, I absolutely relate to this movie. Growing up with the kids, uh, running around the neighborhood, getting on your bikes. I mm-hmm. never had the issue of having to find baseballs just because my dad was a coach. He already had pl- plenty of baseballs had, around. Yeah. We had the equipment. But yeah, just the idea of like waking up in summer and going out of the house and just going to do stuff because you didn't have the technology. I mean, sure, video games were a thing, but yeah. if you wanted to really, you wanted to get out and you just wanted to go play. And yeah. baseball was 100% something we did. So. I I, uh, I used to play baseball with these two kids and his dad was a baseball coach and he actually named his son Benny after Benny the Jet Rodriguez. Oh, wow. So this movie is inspiring generation still to this day. Nice, nice, nice. So that's my connection to the movie. Okay. I have not seen it actually. When I watched it last night, I don't think I'd actually seen the movie probably for a solid maybe 15 plus years. Um, but it hit home right away. All the classic scenes... Uh, yeah. It was kind of like, uh, what movie did we watch where it was just like one iconic scene after the other? I feel like it was like Dumb and Dumber, maybe it was the one yeah. we were talking about where it's just like yeah. every scene was like, it just Viewers clicked right again. And Sam Lamont was the same yeah. thing. It was just one iconic scene after the other. And what I love about this movie, I think my favorite part as a kid was, of course, there's the baseball scenes, but then it kind of becomes a heist movie at the end in a, in a funny little <laughs> way where it's, like, it's not even about baseball yeah. anymore. It's just yeah. about retrieving a baseball but the it's baseball. kind of like a B baseball but it becomes like a little heist movie which is yeah uh, I, like I think that was always movie. my favorite part as a kid yeah the, the it's it's the funnest part just how the, how creative they can get while while they're trying to get the baseball uh, it <laughs> in so many different ways uh, i kind of forgot how many different ways they go about it um of course there's the one where it's um yeah yeah on the uh the hanging like from the thing and down. trying to get down yeah but there's probably like they probably did like five different attempts to try to get that baseball i don't remember well, like it being that first, many i i what i remember was that it was like the like what well, one long stick and the dog broke it mm-hmm. and then they did the same thing but with a with a pan just or a <laughs> pot or whatever and right. put it like this and you like crush the the pot and then it was the rec there um the rector set the vacuum the, they set. Tried the vacuum and the vacuum they tried, yeah yeah let's put him over there mm-hmm. nothing worked when yeah yeah had that baseball i was like man just toss it just toss it over just do yeah, it yeah i was thinking the same thing why did you just toss it or something you just they even have a specific it. close-up of him dropping it i was like ah yeah yeah come on you run your mouth and uh, you had it you had it in your hands it's kind of slow at the end uh seeing um um small story and uh, that there's like he knows nothing of baseball absolutely zero it's it's kind of you feel very sorry for him they can't even throw or catch or anything yeah you know he's the new kid he um he just wants to make friends yeah. uh the actor that that played um smalls was so good in this role i was just rewatching mm-hmm. him and man you do feel for him he just felt like a like that's what i love about this movie is they just felt like genuine kids like yes. real kids which probably was the idea because i don't think a lot of these kids had a ton of experience as at acting mm-hmm. uh coming into this movie so they just felt like very much like they could just be a true group of kids you would see down the block exactly and it, it, it they do feel that just having fun and and and, um i gotta say though like the the first time he goes to the sandlot by himself and that ridiculous hat that he has on fishing hat yeah i was like come on man you know i i yeah his outfit he's wearing khakis and his uh, plaid t-shirt he's got his fishing hat on he's got his little plastic gloves 
<laughs> and he yeah he just does not look like he's ready to play some baseball right now mm-hmm. he, he is the a plus student that was the joke he's right. the kind of the nerdy kid right. um, but one of my favorite just elements of this movie is benny himself benny the jet rodriguez mm-hmm. um he takes him under his wing yeah and right away. I, I think it's a good lesson like this movie has a very good life lesson to just kids out there like you know, there's going to be the new kid and it's yeah. going to be hard for him to make friends. But all yeah. it takes is that one kid to say, hey, to step up. come on, just yeah. just come play with us. Like Smalls right. is even like the second time he comes back, he's like, no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to leave. And Benny could have easily just let him walk away and be like, whatever. But no, he says, no, just, man, you think too much. Just right. He actually helped here. him out. He helps him out. He takes him under his wing like a big brother. Mm-hmm. And I love that. I, I really do. And yeah. of course, it's it's those two that actually become the closest friends at the end right. of the movie, as we see, you know, we're jumping to the end of the movie. Uh, if you have not seen The Sandlot, spoilers, I guess, by the way. It's a 31-year-old um, movie. Come on. <laughs> but uh, they're at Dodger Stadium. Benny the Jet plays for the Dodgers. Right. And Smalls is the... Uh, announcer. Uh, announcer. And yeah. they're still tight. Uh, they're obviously... Yeah. You know, he steals home plate. He gives them the... And I don't know if you knew this, but the guy that plays Benny the Jet Rodriguez... The older version is Mike Vitar, who plays Benny. Younger version's older brother. Oh, no wonder so, there was such a similarity. Yeah. So okay. I actually I've known that for the longest time, but I actually sadly found out yesterday that his older brother uh, Pablo Vitar passed away in oh. 2008. Um, I think he was actually a, a police officer in real life. And this was oh, his wow. only acting credit. Um, and yeah, for the longest time, I always knew that that was his older brother. Great casting because yes, it looks just like him. Yeah. But yeah, sadly, I found out that he uh, passed away mm-hmm. pretty young mm-hmm. in 2008. So rest uh, in peace. Want to do a? Yeah, I just wanted to you know mention that since yeah. you know I always like to put that information out there for people yeah. that were unaware. I know, like he he does take him under his wing from day one, and I always thought it was funny that he always has an extra set of something. Extra hat, extra the glove. He's like, here, just have this one. Just here, have this well, one. Well, because that's because he's he is the baseball player, and you would just you would always bring extra Something stuff with extra. you. Like that's okay. yeah, that just shows that Benny is the serious. Out of all the kids, you know, he they kind to of go to distance in a way. He just loved baseball. It wasn't a game. They say this movie wasn't a game to him. It was life, which mm-hmm. is funny because the the dream scene later on with Babe Ruth, he right. he says that like you know this is this is life. Right, um, and right. that was Benny's thing. That that was just what he wanted to do. All the kids are staring at fireworks, and he's still focused on the game. So yeah, he would 100 have all those extra things with him. Right. Well, I I got I must say this. So as much as I love the kids, uh, you know the the group mm-hmm. of kids, they are little shits to <laughs> Scotty right away. Like they would yeah. not have given him a, a chance at all uh, no, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for Benny. And if Benny wasn't the leader of that group. Then who knows if he even would have, if he was, you know, not considered the best player, would he have stepped up for Smalls? But they, they, they really treated him like shit. <laughs> like, even you even feel even more sorry for Smalls when they treat him like that. But then it was like the quick turnaround as soon as he throws the actual baseball, like, all right, all right. Yeah. Uh, He's all right. I, I can't remember the one character's name, the tall kid with the glasses that has the chaw later on. He catches it. He's just oh, like, yeah. all right, let's play some ball. Yeah. And then I think it's uh, Squid says, he's all right. He's all right, yeah. He's One like, of my favorite parts he's... about Squints is um, how he's just wrong the whole movie. <laughs> like, all they had to do was knock on the door, and they all go, Squints! Squints! Oh, my God! Yeah! It's your fault! Which is so true, because it's like, all they had to do, they go through all that trouble, all they had to do was knock on the door, and he would have given him the dang ball. Yeah. Uh, but I do like how that actually plays into like the whole neighborhood um, sort of urban legend that there's always that one crusty old person at that house. And that's the house you don't go to. Right. And God forbid you hit it into that person's yard. You're never getting that back because they're the mean right. old because person that, that lives the down the street. Because the beast ate that one kid. That, right. Uh, that's the extreme squints. version in, in this movie that, yeah, there's this, this monstrous dog. And if you go over there, he's going to eat you. And it becomes this whole urban legend. Right. And of course, which is great because like throughout the whole movie, you see these big puppet dogs that yeah. are humongous. And then it just turns out to be just a, you know, just a big dog, but just a regular, regular, dog. regular old dog. He's not going to eat anybody. He just, he just liked playing with baseballs. He liked baseballs. That's all. 
he was just lonely. He just needed someone to play with. And I think exactly. that's why he shares his baseballs with him at the end. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Squints finally becomes a part of the team. He finally gets accepted. That's when we start to go kind of scene by scene. Um, we got the pool, the pool scene, which is great. The pool um, scene. I could never tell what the kids say all together right before that scene where they go. But I finally found out that they go the pool honeys. Yeah, the pool honeys. But I never, I could <laughs> never tell what they were saying as a kid. I thought they were oh. screaming pool wave, but I'm like, I can't, I just, gotcha. I could never tell. And then finally I, I understood it was pool honeys because all the, the girls that were at the right, pool. Right, right. Of I course, one of those the... girls being Wendy Peppercorn. Oh, yeah, Wendy Peppercorn. Squints, Squints has eye on her. I always remember what, uh, that part of the movie when uh, like older Smalls is narrating and then he says that uh, that that was going to be his future wife and he does end up marrying her and has nine kids with her. Yeah, and they own and operate Vincent's Drugstore. <laughs> Which actually but, was a real place that you can go visit in Utah where they filmed the movie. I was no. watching a, a, a filming location video after the movie and mm -hmm. the guy goes all the different places. They filmed in like the Salt Lake, Salt, Salt Lake City, Utah area. Mm -hmm. And that actually is still a drugstore. It's not open, but it still says like Vincent Drugs on it and okay. signs around. So, yeah. Yes. But I love the fact when they first get to the pool and... Um... Porter? Ham? Por yeah. Yeah, right. cannibal. <laughs> yeah. But he's just walking, walking on the edge of the pool Hey, ladies. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I I know you like it. Yeah. <laughs> and then he just splashed the hell out of him. That's the, the pool scene was funny. It's really like, he can't swim. He can't swim. Squint, squint. Somebody save him. I just like the big build up when he's just laying there and all the kids are making comments like, yeah, yeah, he looks pretty crappy. He looks, oh, looks like a looks dead like fish. Dead fish. <laughs> and then. You finally see him just open his eyes and he gives that little smirk and everyone's like, what? What? And then leans in for that that kiss and oh. planted it right on her. That's that's a bold move right there. That's He's a... been planning it for years. <laughs> Remember that. He's been planning it for years. <laughs> that that, there's, that definitely earned him some points with the with the boys. Like oh, yeah, he's a little player. Now it pretty much comes down to like where it then he destroys the seam of the baseball that time right uh that's when that's because yes, that was the day right. of the yeah because they're all looking down at the at the baseball yeah yes and that's the when omen. Small says, that was the day of the omen right the, the omen that i all thought it was a good thing and maybe not i got a baseball not knowing anything oh small 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 sign from some lady baby ruth <laughs> oh god can you imagine if someone actually did that, that would suck. <laughs> yeah, I, I brought a baseball with me. Yeah, it's this time by some some guy, and you just end up hitting it, destroying the ball. <laughs> the autograph is like disappearing at that point. I do like at the end of the movie when it's the older version of them, and he's got the three baseballs. Yeah, there, yeah. and it's the nineteen twenty seven Yankees. It's the chewed up Babe Ruth and then it's the one that Benny signed the, the face, Babe Ruth one, the so one yeah. <laughs> I always thought that was that that was cool yeah he, you know kept all those and it's funny because his mom at one point when when he's in his little um room with all the stuff the she says room, yeah. you know maybe maybe you know his father passed it down to him and Which maybe he'll he pass it down to you did. and and he obviously does so I thought yeah. I thought that was a nice little little subtle touch yeah that, that, that Dennis, Dennis nice. Leary as the father as the stepdad which yeah. watching rewatching this movie, looking at him and the guy that plays Scotty Smalls, they look like they could have been real life father son. They look very I, similar. Yeah, they did. I I had forgotten that Karen Allen was the mother. Yeah, as a kid, every time I watched the movie, I always go, "That's the lady from Raiders of the Lost Ark," and that's all I knew her from. Yeah. Was, every time, I was that's the Raiders of the Lost Ark lady. I knew her name, but it was yeah. just is Sandlot and that. And that's that's all I knew her from. <laughs> that's pretty much where everyone knows her from. But I, I I completely forgot about her as the mama when I saw the the intro credits like Karen Allen who is she in this movie and then, oh small small mom okay 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 I mean she doesn't have a big part but I like how everyone every single kid does have his his own character and it's so different so quirky 
what his name is Porter. Yeah, his nickname is Ham. 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 He's got his own like macho uh persona, even like uh the game he ends up uh getting in. Oh, the little league the... team. Uh-huh. That that was funny trying to distract them every time. Like, you think your 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 sister would go out with me? Like, oh, is she over there is naked? Your, is that your sister in left field naked? You should go out with me. Here it comes. <laughs> Here it comes. Low and outside, just how I like it. <laughs> that is stuff you would do, though, as a kid, just, especially as the catcher. Just, just to shit. distract. But no. When you got Benny the Jet Rodriguez, when you also got Kenny the Heater de Nunez pitching. No way, man. And I wonder if this is a thing. So, you know, they introduced this little league team, clearly organized baseball, and then mm-hmm. there's their Sandlot kids that they're just playing the Sandlot. And I just wonder if, like, maybe in 1962 when this movie takes place, mm-hmm. um, like, these Sandlot kids couldn't afford to play in these organized baseball leagues. Like, maybe they were too expensive. Most likely. Because when I grew up in, you know, the 90s playing Little League, everybody could play. It was it was pretty affordable. Even, you know, mm-hmm. I came from a, you know, a lower class income family in my neighborhood. Uh, but everybody could play. So I just wonder in, like, the 60s, maybe that wasn't the case. And that's why these Sandlot kids couldn't maybe afford it. Um, that's why they gotta, you know, play play in the sandlot. Right. Like, remember the they they even have to like save up their money just to get ninety eight cent or sixty eight cents just to get a baseball. Ninety eight cents. Was it ninety eight? Okay. Yeah, it was so cents. like ninety eight cents, and I, I, at the time, he really did have to save. But also, again, like they all lived in the same neighborhood. They had their like cookout for Fourth of July. Oh, but speaking again, of neighborhoods, yeah. so. This is something I I finally understood watching this last night that I never really realized before. So where the Sandlot is, obviously, uh, Mr. Myrtle's house is right behind it. Right. And then there's a tree house where they spend a good amount of time. And then there's somebody's house there as well. Right. Now, clearly... I was every time I watched this movie, I never knew whose house that was. Like they're they're clearly in somebody's Liz backyard. Quince? No, it's the Timmins house. Timmy and Tommy Timmins. But oh. it's never said. I learned that because of one of the one of the behind the scenes videos I watched. So that's okay. Tommy and Timmy Timmins house. But I'm like, every time I watch this movie, I'm like, did they just happen to have a clubhouse there, or are they just in some random stranger's backyard doing all this stuff? <laughs> but now it makes sense that it's one of the kids' house. I just never knew who. Oh. See, I always thought it was uh, like Squince's um, a tree house because he... I thought it was Squince too because he yeah he tells the story right right so that would have made made more sense but no it was the Timmins it's it's their house okay okay by the way that that was a cool tree house I like that yeah the tree house in this movie was always <laughs> awesome I always remember those scenes it's so um, I wish I wish I had a tree house like that I know it was like so big it had big windows had a little porch on the balcony and then they blow it up. They blow it up with the damn vacuum cleaners. I wanted to talk about the uh, the dream scene that that Benny has. Yeah, which is really where he gets the inspiration for, uh, just going and get the ball. Um, he gets visited by Babe Ruth. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably one of the most iconic scenes of the movie. It has one of the greatest lines in sports movie history, where it's you know, heroes get remembered, legends never die. I feel like that's right. still quoted to this day. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever knew this, but uh. Babe Ruth picks up a baseball card and it's Hank Aaron. Uh, yeah. Do you know the significance of that? Uh, related to Babe Ruth? No. The significance of Babe no. Ruth taking the Hank Aaron card is because Hank Aaron would go on to uh, be the all-time home run leader, at surpassing Babe Ruth. So oh. it was a big deal at the time when it okay. happened. I think it had it not happened in 1962. So that's the significance of that scene. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but James know. Earl Jones real to be a baseball player that played with George Babe Ruth. Yeah. Uh, but I think he's just a, a fictional player. I don't think he actually was given an, okay, an actual gotcha. like based on uh, he might have been based on a real person, but I don't think he he's is an actual specifically somebody. Player. Yeah. Okay. But he's definitely not Hank Aaron. Okay. 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 Well I didn't know about the the card though. But I was wondering why and I always thought it was that, but no, that makes yeah. sense. No. So he would That's go on cool. to That's pretty cool. the all time he's not as of now, he's not the all-time Barry Bonds is, but yeah, Hank Aaron would. That was like a big deal, especially at that time, with you know, black baseball player um, right. to surpass Babe Ruth, considered the greatest baseball player of all time at the time, right. still potentially is considered the greatest of all time. 
So yeah, it was a big, big deal at the time. It's funny how like, he had that dream and then Smalls had like the complete opposite the anxiety dream. dream. Yeah, he was getting, uh, what was it? He was getting chased by the dog or? Uh... I think he was getting, like being attacked or something. Yeah, yeah. He just had an anxiety dream. Yeah, <laughs> which is, would be typical for Smalls to have a, <laughs> right. a dream like that. And that gives Benny the inspiration to put on the PF flyers and just jump over the fence and take it back. There. Can you imagine? Can you imagine running away from a dog for that long? Yeah. Jeez. I mean, twelve-year-old kid probably could do it. Me now? Hell no. I'd be gassed yeah. after the first twenty feet. To... I just throw the ball back and say, "Just take a dog." Just can't, it. Can't, can't make it past the sand lot. <laughs> But there are some great scenes of him running uh, the picnic mm-hmm. or the, yeah. fa- uh, the Founder's Day picnic. He's running through the cage, <laughs> jumps over the cake, and the dog jumps up, jumps under the cake, and then all the kids jump around it. And um, I think it's Ham takes a swipe of the cake and eats yep. it. Yeah. And of course, they put it down, and the thing goes flying in the air. Then he's running through the movie theater when they're watching uh, Wolfman. Oh, that was fun. That was a good one too. Just... Yeah. So there's a bunch of and he just goes through the pool. I, I always remember this scene. I still quote it to this day. Anytime I see a dog, I go, "Oh, a doggy." Oh, that's a big dog. That's a big dog. <laughs> With the kid at the pool. Um, so yeah, I yeah, all those scenes I remember. And then yeah. of course he finally gets them back to the sand lot. Mm-hmm. And you know, I got I must say, I was I was getting a little emotional at the end of this move at this part. And the dog when the fence falls on the dog and they help yeah. him up. Uh, that I was starting to get a little emotional and a little teary eyed. And then yeah. of course James Earl Jones shows up and I love I love his scene. He's just so great in it. Yeah. Um I love mm-hmm. it. How he's just a misinterpreted mean guy in the neighborhood mm-hmm. but he's just mm-hmm. he's just an old man who loves baseball and um, you know, i like the scene when he's showing him uh, showing him his you know his collection and i, I like yeah. the little nod to you know I, I was actually a better hitter than babe ruth but uh <laughs> you know i had to retire early no but i i same i i got emotionally emotion to the when the fence falls on him and you can hear the little the dog the dog going like oh no lift that fence come on guys come on but, but even when uh after they save the dog they, they're just face to face just and he just licks them and then they're buddies and he shows them his collection of baseballs and they said we can play forever we don't ever have to worry about it yeah, yeah. and then i like the wrap up to this movie i do like that it's kind of an american graffiti ending where they sort of give a little explanation of what happens cool. to everybody yeah. as it goes on Let's see. With uh, Ham, he becomes a professional wrestler. Right. The great Hambino. The Hambino, yep, yep. Uh, let's see. The the Timmons brothers go on to create mini malls as well as some other <laughs> little things. Um, I can never remember his name. It's the tall kid with the glasses. I don't remember. Uh, let me double check. He he's the one that uh, got really into the '60s and then oh, disappeared. Yeah. Um, which I always was thought is an is an interesting line because I actually. I have friends from my childhood who kind of, it's funny, I was just talking to one of my good friends from my childhood the other day, and mm-hmm. we were talking about, you know, other of our childhood friends and how they just kind of disappeared from life. Um, mm-hmm. They're not on social media, they just vanished. Yeah. He was um, Bertram Grover Weeks, that was his character. Okay. So he was the tall kid with the glasses, and yeah, he's the one that got really into the 60s and never heard <laughs> from him again. Kenny DeNunez uh, started a little league team, he played minor league baseball, mm-hmm. started his little league team called the Heaters. The Heaters, yeah. Um. Yeah. Let's see, Squints, yes, married Wendy Peppercorn. They had nine kids. They own Vincent's Drugstore and still yeah, operate right. it today. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. Went on to become, did he Didn't involve, he become like, a military team? because he's like a parachuter? Oh, yes, was, that's was that right. It? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. something like that. Where he, I think it was like military or something because he became a parachuter. And then I'm trying to think if there's any other kids besides Smalls and Benny because obviously we see what happens to right. them. Uh, ben Andy does become a pro baseball player. Smalls becomes a commentator uh, mm-hmm. uh, for baseball for the Dodgers. And mm-hmm. obviously they stayed in touch and still stayed friends. Right. Um, and I just kind of like how they said, you know, over the years, the, this movie reminds me so much of, uh, it's like Stand By Me kind of as well. With yeah. the narration. Same, same kind of then, feeling, and, yeah. And then seeing what happens to the kids at the end. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. very much Stand By Me. Right. Oh, Christmas Story, which is like the narration. I don't know why I thought of Christmas Story. I still story. haven't seen a Christmas Story. But yeah, just having like a narrator. Um, I thought the narrator version works great in this movie. It you does, know, it I, does. it's a very critical thing, but 
I thought it was done so well. It, it adds comedy to certain scenes, adds drama to certain scenes. Yeah. I don't know if you knew this, but the writer director is the narrator as well of the movie. Ah, uh, okay. No, I didn't know. Okay. Hercules goes to be uh, 199 years old in dog years. In dog which is still years. really old for a dog. I was doing the math because every seven dog. every seven years, right? That's right? dog years. So years. what did I make? I mean, like but that would be 28. Wow. But you got to think by the time the 1962 is happening, the story of mm-hmm. him has already been hap- like for a while. So right. I think that's the idea. Is he's just been around for so long. But yeah, he'd be 28 years old, which is uh, that's that's old. That would be very crazy, for, especially for a big dog. Right. I do like that scene, though, where it is just Benny. Once again, he's just rounding the bases and Hercules just there watching him with his little Hercules shirt on. Uh, I don't know. Benny's just like, old shirt, right? Very ripped, right? No, it? or, or no, it's it's the green one. He's got the green. Yes, the the, the baseball tee. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I don't know. I just like that little scene where it's just Benny playing because he would he would just be playing by himself because that's how much he loves the game. Right. You know, if, if nobody yeah. was around, baseball is not a baseball is not a sport you can play by yourself. You need other people. Right. Um. So, for but that's just how much he loves it, just to be playing. And Hercules is just sitting there watching that's him. Much, so man. I don't know. I, I like that scene. It's very uh, iconic. To me. It makes you a little sad because he's, he's the only one left, but mm-hmm. also like he's still enjoying himself. Although doesn't Smalls in the narration say that he was the last one to leave? Well, he does. He says they moved away a few years later, I think, after junior high. But yes. I, thought, I could be wrong. I thought he said he was the last one in the neighborhood, but maybe it was Benny he meant. Maybe he meant Benny, yeah. Because th- he definitely says... That his family stayed for a few more years and then they moved and they left uh, yeah. after junior high. So that would have been like three more years. Cause I think it's, he says it's the summer after fifth grade. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, probably like three more years, but that's yeah. such a, that's such yes. a thing. Like, especially for me growing up, it's like, I saw childhood friends move and you never saw them again. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up being the, the one that ended up moving as well. Thankfully not that far away. So I could still stay in touch right. with my childhood friends and still see them. But yeah, it's just like people do kind of come and go in your life as a kid. And, you know, back when I was, you know, when we were growing up early 2000s, somebody moves away. That's kind of it, you know, and, until, you know, maybe you reconnect later on social media. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when you moved away, if you didn't have their phone number, they were gone. They were gone. Yeah. So it's actually, sure. you know, for this movie, for them to kind of stay in touch uh, is, is nice, you know. Yeah. It's nice yeah. to see that. Yeah. Because I definitely it's different from for me growing up because. I never really had my friends very close. Like they were, they weren't like in the same neighborhood or anything like that. There was, they still lived like far away. Mm-hmm. You know? But the the thing is, that I would still see them at school. Mm-hmm. So it, it, that's how it was. But then it it kind of like just drifted a little bit when I moved out of the country. <laughs> right. So I still keep in touch with some of my friends back home, not as often as I would when i was a kid yeah um, yeah this movie just feels very true to like the childhood experience just growing yes. up in a neighborhood and you would just become friends with kids that lived in your neighborhood which was this case benny lived across the street and you would that, that's kind of how it was for me like i remember growing up in my neighborhood you know i would just play pl- play baseball in the street with my next door neighbor um if he was out we would just be playing in the street you know or mm-hmm. my other friends that lived down the street we would just go down the street and play so that's yeah just neighborhood kids man and eventually they they all move on you ever watch the sandlot too no i didn't even know there was a second one yeah there's two sequels i actually watched i've seen it before i watched sandlot 2 last night after watching sandlot because i'd not seen it in a while it's from like 2005 uh-huh. same same writer director he does the narrate narration again figured mm-hmm. i'd give a little sandlot 2 a shout out as well if you can name three pitches then you get your five dollars <laughs> Three pitches. Three pitches. Three types of pitches. Fastball. Right, what am I? What is this right now? Fastball. There you go. Two types of fastballs for you. Four seam. Two seam. Okay. Okay. So you name fastball. Uh, there you go. Give me another one. Okay. Come on. Some uh, of these you would use in just like everyday lingo. <laughs> when life uh, takes a turn, it, it threw ball. you a curveball. Curveball. Uh, I don't know. Hard you ball. Fastball. You got no. You got fastball, you got curveball, you got a changeup, you got a sinker, you got a sweeper, you got a slider, knuckleball. Come on, you know what a knuckleball is. 
I heard a knuckleball, but that's about it. The, all the oh, rest wow. of them you mentioned, forget it. <laughs> I don't know. Next time um, I'm down in Florida, Chris, I'm taking you to the field, and I'm gonna bring my gloves. Actually, not, I'm not joking. We're, I'm bringing my gloves, and we're gonna play catch. And okay. I'm gonna teach you some things because this is ridiculous. I, I can't even name one. A, a, a bat too. <laughs> I'll bring. I'll bring everything down. I got everything here. <laughs> But you can't even name one baseball player. Come on. Uh, current? No. Like current? No. Do you even have a team, folks? I'm trying here. I'm trying my best. <laughs> you know, I'm just. I was an indoor kid. I didn't go and play sports. Okay. I don't follow sports. I don't like watching sports. Sometimes yes, but like in the big things, like the you know the 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 the, the, the... Lord give me strength. Like the Super Bowl or the or the Copa Super America. Bowl, do you know you know you know what sport that is, right? Uh isn't it tennis? Oh jeez. Ha ha ha. Oh boy. I'll watch the Super Bowl. Yeah, you watch I'll the watch Super Bowl that. for the commercials. You don't watch it for the game. <laughs> I do, I do. I was playing the Yankees and the Zebras. <laughs> the zebras. <laughs> No, but I uh, would like the the Copa America. I I watched that with uh, Colombia against um, Argentina. I watched that. I watched it. You know, and then uh, sometimes I'll watch any FIFA pretty much if it's on. But when I'm down there, Chris. The World Series, the playoffs will be going on. We're watching the playoffs. You're gonna <laughs> learn some names. We're gonna play some baseball. Okay. We're gonna get okay. you a hat. You're gonna actually wear a hat. I'm gonna get you. Something that's not a Mickey Mouse T-shirt. <laughs> wow, you're like taking really offense. <laughs> I have zero knowledge of baseball. Yeah, we're gonna teach you. You're gonna like catch. I'm gonna to pitch play. to you. I'm gonna pitch, what? and you're gonna catch. You're gonna. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you're gonna put the catcher's gear on. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna throw you a fastball, changeup, curveball, and then get hit everywhere. Okay. That's mm. baseball for you. I've been hit everywhere as it when i played i got hit in the head i got hit in the butt i got hit in the back i got hit in the arm i got hit everywhere i i got stepped on with cleats yeah oh oh i can imagine that's painful thank you everyone for watching and if you're a big fan of the sandlot big fan of baseball go for it it's a nice family movie if you really appreciate baseball like josh here uh <laughs> By the way, I'm not Go a Yankees out. fan. This is just a team I played for in Arizona. I'm not Atlanta Braves fan. Go sure. Braves. Sure, 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 sure. But yeah, go out and play. Go play baseball. Go in your backyard. Go on, go on, go play. Kids, get yeah. out of the house and play some ball. Be like it's 1999 again. Just go out and play some ball, you know? Get, go to the park. Play, some ball. play catch. Go sweat. Go play catch with your dad. Get dirty. Anyways, know. thank you everybody for watching. I'm going to name three players for you. You need to tell me the, which one is not a real baseball player. Here we go. Are okay. you ready? Yeah. Shohei Otani, David Alomar, Freddie Freeman. Who's the fake? Freddie Freeman. You lose. No. Freddie Freeman is a first baseman for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Once again, people, three names in the comments. $10. Venmo. Go. Have a good night. Stop print moving on.